Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be demoing and reviewing two products. I'm going to be talking about the new Natasha Denona Glam Face Palette. I have it in the light version. I'm going to be applying that to my eyes and my face. I'll have some comparisons for the blush and I'm also going to hold it up against the other Glam products in the Natasha Denona line just so we can kind of talk a little bit about how the collection is as a whole and how each of the components compares to one another. And I'm also going to be reviewing the new Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Foundation. I'll show you how I apply that. I'll talk about my experience with it and how I've discovered I like to wear it best. So if you'd like to see all of that, just keep on watching. All right, so I want to start with the Natasha Denona palette. Obviously, I have my foundation on already, and I will show you myself applying the foundation and talk about my process and my full review of the foundation. But first, I want to get this palette on my face and eyes. So I got the light version, and here's what it looks like. And I'm going to start with the eyes. First, taking my classic crease from Sonia G, going right into this shade here, which is called Transition. So I've got that transition shade just all over my crease basically and the real test for me for this shade is to see if it turns too orangey on me. Often shades like this one um, which are kind of it's kind of like a, a rosy taupe. Sometimes those can go orange on me which I don't like so I'm really hoping that this will stay true to color and not go too warm but I just wanted to show you the swatches of all these shades before I go any further. So this is that transition shade that I just put on. Then this one here is the crease shade. That's the one that's kind of the, the mid-tone matte. And then the deepest matte in the palette is this one here, which is called Smoke. And then I have the two shimmers here, and those are kind of out of order. So this is the shimmer that's closest to the Smoke shade. That's the outer corner shimmer. And this one here is the inner corner shimmer. So I'd say the two shimmers are pretty similar in terms of their depth, but they, they pull in a different direction in terms of the tone. This one to me is looking a little bit more rosy, kind of really pairing well with that shade. A little bit more of a rosy beige, and I think it reflects a, just a bit brighter. And then the outer corner one here is a little bit more of a warmer beige tone, and it doesn't have quite that same really, really bright reflect, but both really beautiful shimmery shades and the mattes are really gorgeous too. So let's continue on with the eye look. Now I'm using my Wayne Goss 06 brush into this crease shade right here. I'm just going to pull that all along the crease just to define that, but keeping it in a bit of a more concentrated application than I did with the first transition shade. See, it's just adding that bit more definition to the crease area. Now with the same brush, I'm gonna go into the deepest matte called Smoke, and I'm going to pull that from the edge of the lash line into the outer V, and just kind of blend the excess further into the crease. I want to bring back that transition shade a bit, so I'm going back with my classic crease with just a touch of that on just to kind of soften out the blend here and just to reintroduce that color so it doesn't get lost in the deeper ones. Okay, and I want to do a little bit of a halo eye type situation, so I'm going back with the smoke shade and this time using my 07 brush from Wayne Goss, which is just a little bit smaller allows a bit more precision than the 06 and I'm putting that deep color into the inner crease as well kind of pulling it along the inner part of the lash line and 
And now I actually want to draw that smoke shade along the lash line as well. It'll need to be topped up because I'm going to cover it over with shimmer probably, but I just wanted to get that little base of that depth there. And now I'm ready to go into the shimmers. So I'm going to go with this outer corner shade right through the middle of the lid in a kind of a, a halo circ circular shape. Using my Refer 21 for that, I used my Refer 03 for that little bit of a, a liner there. I am going to take a little bit of that same outer corner shade on my finger just to really amplify the shine there. And then just taking my mini booster brush from Sony G just with nothing on it, just kind of blending around the edges of that shimmer shade just to make sure that it doesn't have any harsh lines. On the lower lash line, I'm taking the shade Transition on my Wayne Goss 06, just pulling that all the way along. Shade Crease on my Wayne Goss 07 to deepen up the outer corner and the inner third. Refer 03 with the shade Inner Corner. Placing that in the center of the lower lash line. And in the inner corner. All right, I'm gonna do my liner and mascara and then I'll be back to finish off the rest of the face. Okay, the eyes are all finished. I used my Victoria Beckham Coco liner on the lash line and the upper water line. And then I blended out what was on the lash line with a little bit of that smoke shade again, just to kind of smoke it out and um, soften out that line. And then I used my Chantecai mascara. Everything will be listed below as usual. And now I'm ready to get on to the rest of the face. So I already have my foundation on and I didn't use concealer today. I used the foundation as concealer and I have a little bit of cream bronzer and contour very, very lightly. Um, applied to uh, my cheeks and a little bit on my temples and under my chin. And now I'm ready to go in with blush. So I'm going to go in with this cream blush from the Natasha Denona palette. I swatched it yesterday but didn't apply it and I was really kind of surprised at how dry of a texture it is. It, it's really almost like a hybrid uh, cream powder texture. It doesn't feel creamy or really wet at all and once you get to swatching it it feels pretty much like a powder. So I'm interested to see how it'll apply. So I'm just going to use my standard cream cheek brush. This is the Sonia G Classic Base and just pat right into that pan and right onto the cheeks. I didn't set my cheeks with powder today. I, I did a little bit of strategic powdering through the center of my face and on my chin, but not on my cheeks. I think that this product would probably apply fine over powder as well though, because of the consistency. So I'm liking the color of this and I'm liking how buildable it is. You can get a very light wash of color or if you're so inclined, you can build it up to a stronger blush. I have a little bit of a spot right there. I don't know what it is, but just a little red spot. So if you're noticing that, it's not the blush, it's just on my skin. Actually, this blush is reminding me a lot in terms of the, the formula and the texture a lot of that Minori Beauty Cream blush that I used, I think, last week in a video. Almost, it's a very dry,
cream formula and really more of a kind of cream to powder feel. And it's similarly very buildable. You can start very, very light or you can start a bit heavier or build up to a heavier application. So I'm gonna leave that blush like that for now. I'll probably top it up a little bit after I do the highlight. And the highlight is not a cream as far as I can tell, although it's so smooth that it almost feels creamy. That's what it looks like. It's a really beautiful, soft powder. And I just wanna swatch it next to those other shimmers, the eyeshadow shimmers, so you can see. So they're all definitely in the same type of family. Really beautiful variations on kind of beige champagne shimmers but this one is lighter than the other two. And it also has a little bit of a rosy tone, kind of like this one, but it's lighter and um, it doesn't have the same kind of sparkly shimmers in it. It looks like a very smooth shimmer. And buffing it onto the cheek. It almost has a wet-like glow to it. It's really lovely. Just want to pull that along my brow bone too. Okay, that's a gorgeous highlighter. I've been moving away from powder highlighters lately, but I think this one is quite interesting. It, when it's buffed in, it can look very nice on the skin, I think. And it does have a real kind of glass, really wet-like glow to it, which is gorgeous. I'll have to take a look at it later in different lighting so I can really see how it looks under all different conditions. But in just the light that's coming in through my window here, it looks really quite nice and it doesn't, doesn't appear to be emphasizing texture at all. It just blended into the skin so beautifully. I'm continually struck by how wet it looks and how it really just meshes right into the skin. I'm just topping up the blush a little bit now. All right, so here's the completed look. I think this palette is gorgeous. I think I'll continue to talk about the palette and then I'll move on to the foundation last. So I think that the tones in this are really beautiful. I definitely think it's appropriate for the fairest of skin tones and I can see how it would be versatile across all skin tones. And I can kind of imagine how the deep one, they're bo both of the, the light and the deep versions of this palette are meant to be used by any skin tone. And I went for the light just because I, I knew that would be better for me and more to my taste. But obviously I can imagine that the, the deep eyeshadow tones would work for anyone. And my only concern really with the, the deeper palette would be the highlighter. And I don't know if that would, would work on my skin, but I do know that this one does. And even this highlighter, I was a little bit concerned that it might be too deep, but I think it looks really beautiful on the skin. And I'm not seeing a cast or anything with it. And, and I think the texture of it is really very special. I'm not sure if this is a new f a highlighter formula for Natasha Denona, I think it might be. Blush I think is beautiful. I think it's a really great universal color. It could be an everyday color, which is perfect for a palette like this. And the eyeshadows are all everyday type colors as well. And I actually appreciate that she hasn't put anything too deep in there. This one is deep enough to really add the smoke and definition, but I don't find it too dramatic that it's going to really overwhelm the eyes. Sometimes I can get carried away with um, doing a smoky eye. And while sometimes deeper smoky eyes can look pretty good on camera, they can be a little bit overwhelming in real life. But I think that this palette is going to be really everyday friendly for real life. And I think that all these tones are really easy to play with, very flattering to the eyes. And I'm happy to report that they have not turned too orangey or warm. They stayed really true to color. This beautiful kind of rosy, peachy, taupe tone. And I would consider this to be neutral, 
but leaning a little bit into the warm category, but as I said, not too warm at all. And that's even for someone like me who tends to have shadows turn warm on them even when they don't look warm in the palette. So I think this is a beautiful, beautiful palette. And I just wanted to take a quick second to just kind of look at it compared to the other two glam palettes. And I'm looking mainly at the eyeshadows here. That's the mini glam, which I also love. This I would consider, well, this is a rosy taupe kind of color story. This to me is kind of a yellowy beige color story. I love this one too. This is another one. It's neutral warm, but it doesn't turn orangey at all. And then if we look at it compared to the midi size glam palette, I consider this to be a neutral leaning cool. So there are a lot of kind of gray type tones in this one. That, that I would say is kind of the dominating feel of this palette is kind of a, a neutral leaning cool toned gray. So I really appreciate the variation across these three glam palettes. And I think it's wonderful that they're they're all in that glam family for sure. They're all neutral tones, really easy to wear for every day, but each one of these three palettes has its own color story to it at the same time. I think in a pinch you could even use some of these mattes as bronzer or contour shades on the face, so I actually want to try that, although I have a little bit of, of cream bronzer and contour down already. I just want to try topping it off with a little bit of uh, these eyeshadows just to test them out. I think I'm going to start with the transition shade right here. This could actually be a really nice bronzer color. And I'm taking that on my Inoshige Pro from Sonia G. And just want to kind of see how that blends into the skin. That's quite nice, actually. It adds more definition and it is kind of a, a combination of a bronzer and a contour in terms of the effect on the skin. And so that's what it looks like with transition used as a bronzer contour. I think that works perfectly. You could definitely get away with that as your only uh, bronzing contour product, at least if you're my skin tone. And I think that the crease shade would work if you're a little bit deeper than I am. And even if you're along the deeper end of the spectrum, the smoke shade could probably work as well because they're all quite balanced neutral tones. Before I move into the foundation, I just wanted to do a quick comparison with the blush tones. So this is the blush from the Glam Face palette. This one here is the Fenty Cream Blush in Rosé Latte. And then this here is the Victoria Beckham Cream Blush in the shade Mini Skirt. And this is the Lisa Eldridge Blush in the shade Dante's Dream. Definitely all in the same family. They're all kind of like rosy, browny, mid-tone shades. Very, very versatile and easy to use for every day. I wanna just build up the Natasha Denona shade a little bit because I do think it's the the most sheer and kind of buildable of these formulas. And then if I just blend out the other ones further so we can really get a better look at the undertones here. I think that Rosé Latte is the closest to the Natasha Denona, although it's a little bit browner. The um, Victoria Beckham mini skirt has a little touch more of a kind of burgundy tone to it. And Dante's Dream is so, so close to mini skirt. So I would say it as well has just a little bit more burgundy than the Natasha Denona shade. But once they're on the face, I think they're all gonna look quite similar. So once again, this is the Fenty Cream Blush in Rosé Latte. This is the Natasha Denona Cream Blush in the Glam Face Palette light version. This is the Victoria Beckham Beauty Cream Blush in the shade Mini Skirt. And this is the Lisa Eldridge Blush in the shade Dante's Dream. Okay, now it's time to move on to the foundation. So this is the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Foundation. This is the box it comes in. It's a beautiful kind of soft and very thick, heavy cardboard and it opens up like this. And then you have the foundation nestled in this box here, which you can either store and display it in the box or you can lay it on its side. It has this flat area. It's actually like a little bit concave so that it can sit flat on your table as well. 
The bottle is beautiful. It's really unlike anything I've ever seen, which I think was Lisa's intention in designing this bottle. And she was also inspired by the sculptures of Brancusi. I wasn't familiar with Brancusi. I'm not an art buff like Lisa, but she showed some, some pictures of his sculptures. And you can definitely see how her inspiration for this bottle came from his sculptures. The top is gold, it comes off very easily, and then you just have a standard pump. And Lisa designed the pump so that not very much comes out with one pump. And I just want to talk a little bit about the formula and my experience with it. I think the main takeaway for me, this was probably my fifth or sixth time using this in combination with um, using it from the bottle and with the samples in different shades. I found that this formula on me seems to be very resistant to being glowy. So I've tried wearing it in a number of different ways. I found I don't really like it with the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. Uh, it just doesn't mesh that well. I find that often water-based foundations don't really work very well with the Bobbi Brown Face Base. It probably has too many oils in it. So I like it with just a more of a standard moisturizer. And I found that when I apply it over just a standard moisturizer, it does look quite matte on me, but I found that it looks kind of matte regardless of what I do. So when I wore it yesterday, I combined it with my Auric Glow List, which is something I love to do with more matte foundation. So I had, I think, two pumps of this combined with one pump of the Auric Glow Lust in the shade Morganite. And it, I found I really liked how it applied that way. It just made it a little bit easier to spread out and it really glided very smoothly over my skin and blended into the skin really beautifully with that mixture, but it didn't really look any more glowy than the foundation looks without that product, which I found very, very strange and kind of interesting. And then today what I did, and I'm going to show you the footage now, I started off with my regular skincare and moisturizer, and then I put a whole pump of the Auric Glow Lust on top of that. So I had a full layer of the Auric Glow Lust on my face at the beginning of this clip. And then I mixed more of the Auric Glow Lust, so another pump of it, in with three pumps of this foundation. And that was too much, I should have just used two. But I just wanted to, to kind of play with the ratio there. And even that, when I first applied it, I found that the glow was kind of lost. Then went ahead and topped up and kind of used the foundation as a concealer as well. So I just used the foundation not mixed with anything. I could just build up the coverage in certain areas under my eyes and on my blemishes on my chin here around the nose. Standard areas for concealer for me. And you can see what that all looks like together. And I found that immediately after that application, again, still really not much of a glow, but now that it's had a chance to settle into the skin a little bit, I mean, of course I have highlighter on now, but I can see a little bit more of that glow. So even right here, where I definitely didn't apply any highlighter or blush or anything, you can see that reflectiveness and I'm really happy with that. So I'm, I'm happy that I finally achieved the kind of glowing matte finish that I wanted, but it did take a lot of moisturizing and a lot of glow product to get me there. But that's fine, as long as I know how to work with it and get the result that I want, I can be really happy with this. And Lisa designed this foundation so that it would look better as it wears throughout the day. And I have to say that's definitely true. It can take, you know, even up to about an hour to really kind of mesh in with the skin in a, in a really beautiful and seamless way and I love how it wears throughout the day. I don't find I need to top up at all. I don't need to add powder at all. I tend to use my Becca Light Shifter Finishing Powder in the areas that I always use it regardless of the foundation that I'm using. So on my nose and kind of under my eyes and then if I've put any additional coverage or concealer on my chin, I'll put it there too. It doesn't really need it, but I just find it maintains the finish that I want throughout the day without needing any touch-ups if I apply that little bit of powder right at the beginning. So that's the way that I love to wear this foundation and it wears really, really beautifully through the day when I do it that way. When I don't have a glow product mixed with it or if I don't have enough moisture on my skin at the beginning, I find this can look a little bit dry. I know it's kind of a natural finish, kind of not really too matte and not too dewy as Lisa says, but for me, 
it's pretty matte. It wants to sit matte on my skin, so I just have to adjust it a little bit in order to get that slightly more radiant finish that I want from it. And I think that if you have dry skin as well, that you'll probably want to definitely moisturize very, very well before you use this and maybe even mix in a glow product like I do. I have fairly dry skin, but it's not the driest of the dry. Like it's, it doesn't really flake or anything. It's just kind of skin that's sort of consistently a little bit dry. So that's been my experience with this foundation. I think it's really beautiful. I think it gives a beautiful coverage. I like that you can adjust the level of it. I have the shade one. I also bought the shade four for in the summertime because I think that'll be my perfect shade then. But shade one, I'm so, so happy with. It is described as a neutral shade, but I think it's on the cooler kind of rosy side of neutral, which is actually perfect for me. It's not too cool. I don't like to wear foundations that are too cool in tone because it can look way too pink. And it looks very light when I'm just blending it out on my hand here. But once it's blended into the face, it's actually a perfect match to bring my uh, face into the same color as my neck. And it gives the perfect kind of seamless skin that Lisa was really going for. And there's something about this tone and probably the formula too that just adds a real clarity to the skin that I really appreciate. And it is something that I find you can't get with a shade that is technically too dark for you. I need a really light shade like this to give that kind of beautiful, bright clarity to the skin. So I'm really, really happy with the shade of this as well. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful for you. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below. I always love to see those. And if you'd like to see more from me and you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I'd really love for you to do so. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.